So we're going to start with this category right here. So parenchymal tumors, intradural, intramedullary tumors. I'm going to give you, I think, three or four main ones. And um, actually, do you want to take this one, or should I explain the imaging and then you tell them what it is? Do you uh, want to take the case? Go ahead, you can. Go ahead. Do you go ahead? All you. You'll do it? All you. I'll take a harder oh, one. Oh, all me. Okay. <laughs> so this is actually a younger person. I think this is a 15-year-old. I can't remember exactly. Um, okay, so sagittal... This is a T2 weighted image. So spinal, uh, the only way you can tell that is down here. Spinal cord is gray. CSF is bright. So you can see this whole cord, this is just a huge mess. Um, it's expanded. The cord is expanded. The CSF spaces around it, as you see here, are gone. So we know it's a parenchymal intradural intramedullary tumor. So on a T2, we can see that there's some soft tissue to it. This is the tumor. There are also cysts involved, you know, so they're bright, they're water, they're like the color of CSF. Huge, expansive tumor, not well defined. The margins, if you said draw exactly where this thing is going, uh, hard to tell down here, maybe here. I'm not sure where the margins are exactly. This picture is a post contrast sagittal. So the tumor itself, the, the soft tissue of the tumor is enhancing, very, very ill defined, um, kind of all over the place, infiltrating tumor, big cyst. Above it, this is normal spinal cord kind of up here. Kind of not really normal down here. So a long segment tumor, cystic and solid, enhancing young patient. Uh, I'll go on. So those are your choices for intermedullary tumors, the, the main ones. Do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> uh, no, I think it's very... Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Should I go on? Okay, so that's going to be your, an astrocytoma. So... Your, your two big choices, I think, when you see big parenchymal tumors in the spine are going to be astrocytoma or ependymoma. Almost always. There are a couple others, but those are the main ones. You want to differentiate for boards, for tests, for pictures you'll see wherever. So 30 to 40 percent, a little bit younger patient infiltrating. So you don't know exactly where the margins of these things are. And that affects the treatment options, which I'll let uh, Dr. Zuli talk about. Usually a very long segment you know, third or half have some kind of cystic component or syrinx associated with them. Syrinx is dilation of the CSF space is not a true encapsulated cyst. And some of these will have metastases in the rest of the spine. So you might want to get other imaging, like in this case, the lumbar spine or the brain. Um, I'm going to go on to the next. I was going to go through these cases quickly. If you want to say anything about it, let me know or I'll keep going. I, I would just keep going. Yeah. Okay. So next one. This, and I'm, like I said, I, this would be fun to describe these more, but I want to get to the Mets, so I'm going to go through this part kind of quickly. This one, lower in the spine, maybe in the conus, more well-defined, so sagittal post-contrast, enhancing, essentially not enhancing. We know it's intramedullary, parenchymal, because it's expanding the cord, the CSF spaces around it are gone, and that's an ependymoma. So those two. Um, are the most common that you'll see. Those are a little bit older patients, not always, but 60, 70% are ependymomas, which are a little bit more common. Ependymomas come from the ependymal cells that line the central canal of the spinal cord. So your spinal parenchyma is all soft tissue, except in the middle where you've got a hole where the CSF goes. And I'm, I'm simple, so I'm explaining this simply. I'm sure Dr. Rizzoli could say this uh, much more scientifically than me. But there's a hole in the middle lined by ependymal cells. It's kind of like your ventricles in your brain. And that's the um, origin of ependymomas. And so they will almost always have some uh, connections kind of the center of the cord itself. They won't be eccentric or peripheral. They'll, you'll, you'll be able to see that it kind of came from the middle and it expanded outward. They're not totally well circumscribed, but better. And most have cysts. And these can often hemorrhage. I don't have a picture here, but if you see um, black on these pictures, that, that's how you see hemorrhage on um, spine MRI. And it's hemorrhage that's likely to be a pendomoma, although not always. Astrocytoma can do that too. I'm gonna keep going until you jump in there, Julie. Okay, this one here's a cervical spine, so sagittal T2, sagittal post contrast. This one you can see there's there are a couple on this person, a couple enhancing masses. A lot of these little black dots behind the spinal cord are prominent vessels, mostly veins. And then you see there's abnormal T2 signal within the cord. So this is not always an entirely intraparenchymal tumor, but most of them are. 
And this is a mangioblastoma. Here you, here you can see it's not in the center like an ependymoma. It's kind of, this is my only axial image I have this. It's kind of out on the, either the outside or on the surface, half in, half out. So these are rare, actually, very rare. 60% um, are entirely intramedullary. Others, 40% are intradural extramedullary. So those are, yeah, kind of fits in this category. Um, about half of them you'll see in the thoracic spine. These also often have cysts and a syrinx, abnormal collection of CSF in the center of the cord, and these fluvoids because they're very vascular. And 80% of these will be just solitary tumors, but people with von Hippel-Lindau, which is the most common way I see them, we do surveillance on these people with von Hippel-Lindau disease, and so we, we watch these, and they get uh, surveillance like every six months or a year, and we see if these spinal um, uh, hemangioblastomas have grown. Anything else for go? Um, one thing I want to say about this is um, if you see a discrete lesion like this, um, you see these uh, hemangioblastomas, these, they're kind of discrete, they're well circumscribed and um, almost homogeneously enhancing in some way. If you see it, it's a tiny lesion, but you see tons of edema or a tiny lesion and a huge cyst. It's often a hemangioblastoma. The, the, the cyst and the edema are way out of proportion to the size of the lead. That's usually a good um, rule of thumb. That's, and that's good. And that's what this, um, this first picture is showing. There is quite a bit of edema or syrinx right. that's going along with this. Yeah. Um, and those, although, um, those, ovoids, those veins are, are usually more associated with um, AVMs. It, they can be associated with hemangioblastomas. But when I first, if you look at, true. if you just looked at that, um, that, left T2 image. Um, I, my initial thought that that was an AVM. Yeah, you see although if you saw it on the, if you saw a different slice in the axles, you'd see there was a mass there, and then you would yeah. know it wasn't an AVM. But yeah, they are very vast. This is an ex extreme example. You typically won't see this, but this is just right, to right. show that there are right. voids often there because they are so vascular. So, all right. And then metastatic disease can be parenchymal, although here I'm showing you drop mets, which, um, you know, along the, the cauda quina. In this case, you know, you've already, you already know this person has cancer. This isn't going to be like a new diagnosis with this picture. Person might have, you know, tumor in their brain, elsewhere in the spine. But I had to put that in this category. So this is sagittal post. You can see they have osseous metastatic disease, abnormal enhancement in the vertebral bodies here, as well as these little enhancing masses at the, along the cauda quina. And this is a sagittal T2. Again, you can just barely see these little masses with the nerve roots right here. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.